Hey, welcome back to another Reaper Blog tutorial. We're continuing that Easy Drummer mix, and we're going straight into adding some reverb to these drums. So I'm a big fan of Valhalla Room, so let's use that one. Bring that onto a new track in parallel, and we'll call this, call this Drum Reverb. I don't often have my drum reverb going into my drum bus, so I'm just going to click on it from the TCP and drag it down so that it's not in the same group. So this reverb is in parallel. All right, so we're going to drag and drop from the snare top track from the send section over to the drum reverb. I'll make a send. It's going to start at minus six, but I have a controller on my keyboard to adjust that as needed. As long as this track is selected, I can control that. If we zoom in here. Got a knob in front of me that I can turn and it adjusts the send level. I think it's totally okay to start with a preset. So let's say chamber and snare, big chamber, and we'll tweak from there. I'm not picky about reverb at all. As long as the balance of frequencies is right, it's not too important to me. The levels and the frequency balance is the most important for me with reverb. So can I hear it? Yeah, a little bit. If I can hear too much, then it's probably too much reverb. That's too much. Let's go to the section with the toms. I can live with that. That's totally okay with me. And we'll just need a little bit on the overheads, I think. Less than that. And I might just bring that down a little bit as well the overall output level of the reverb. And I'm fine with moving on from there. So we haven't done anything with the drums as a whole. And there are a million ways you can approach this. You can start with EQ, you can start with compression, you can start with multiple compressors, tape saturations, and things like that. I'm going to stick with plugins that come with Reaper, with the exception of that uh, Valhalla Room plugin, um, because that's just one of my favorite reverbs, and it's going to be so much harder to get a sound like that with any of the free reverbs or the ones that come with Reaper. So next we're going to put on the JS saturation plugin. We're going to put that right on the drum group. And we're just going to pull that up to about 54%. And let's hear that. It just makes that kick and snare a little bit harder edged, pumps things up a little bit. You can put that up a lot higher than that, but I think that's a good place as a uh, sort of general starting point with the saturation plugins. Uh, so next we're going to some compression and I'll do single band compression. My SSL slamming drums preset is kind of modeled on the um, SSL bus compressor, but we'll see. 
if it works for this. So that's too much, more like here. I will actually put that before the saturation. It's a minor detail, but I think that'll work better. So with this to tweak the sound of the drums, attack is going to let more of that kick attack and the snare attack through or make it sound more squashed. This compressor on all of the drums at once is just going to kind of fit things together, glue, less separation between the sounds. It's a four to one ratio, so it's not too extreme. And we're going for maybe minus six decibels of gain reduction or even less. In my opinion, I feel like if you can really hear that it's pumping or coming down in level, it's probably too much. Next, we're going to another re-EQ on the drum bus. We're just gonna kind of shape the overall sound of the drums. A little brighter, maybe. Yeah, sounds better. Okay, and I'm gonna go back to the hi-hat here. So I really don't like the sound of it on its own. So it needs an EQ. All right, so this is a good place where we can use a JS transient shaper or transient controller, something like that. Transient controller, put that on the toms. This can round off the transients or enhance them or shorten the sound of something or make it a bit longer. So let's just mess around with this on the toms. I want those tom hits to cut through a little bit more so I can going to increase the percent of the attack here. It just kind of tightens things up a little bit when you do it like this. Increase the attack, decrease the sustain. This is very similar to the transient designer hardware and plugins that you'll see. This is the Reaper version of that. And it works pretty well, super easy to use. So let's hear what we have now. And just to compare, let's mute the reverb. Mute the second ambience track, and we'll select all these tracks and 
disable the plugins, and now we're back to flat. So that's a pretty substantial change already. We're not that far into this. So let's take a break and continue this in another video. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. Visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.